Ladies and gentlemen, the final bout on this evening's card is sanctioned by the South African Muay Thai Organization and the World Muay Thai Organization. It's time to create space and go for the KO. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Five rounds of action for the WMO International Welterweight Championship. Introducing to you first, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner, with the height of 1.65 meters tall, blue trunks, and weighing in at 64.5 kilograms. An excellent professional record, 61 wins, five losses, two draws. He fights out of Iron Tiger, Cape Town, South Africa. He is a five-time WMC champion, the 19th ranked welterweight in the world. Presenting the WMO Africa Welterweight Champion, fighting out of South Africa. Please welcome Neto Nintendo Gomba. It has now come time to introduce to you the champion. Fighting out of the red corner, standing 1.75 meters tall with the trunk colors of red and weighing in at 67.1 kilograms. With a professional record, 33 wins, nine losses, three draws. He fights out of the Venzio Gem Nola Campania in Italy. He is the former Italian national and European champion Ranked number 11 in the world by the World Muay Thai Organization. Presenting the reigning, defending WMO International Welterweight Champion, Pasquale Amoroso. Oh, I am. I am too, and we there are feeling go. it. We are on comms. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Curry it. here, along with Carl Bergman. It's been a fantastic fight card. The whole night has been spectacular. Ty Hollick's fight promotions. Main event of the evening, the WMO International Welterweight Champion. Number 19 in the world versus number 11, South Africa versus Italy. Amoroso defending his title up against Gomba. Guys looking to put a stamp on you. You know, holding the international belt means that you just that inching your way closer to that, that world title. I know Neto has been a former WMC world, world title holder. He's the current WMO African champion in the welterweight division. A stadium champion in Thailand. Lived many years there. Over 60 fights to his credit, including the likes of Sanchai and so on. You know, the guys worked around. Amoroso, 
an Italian champion in 2019 and European WMO champion in 2019 too. He won the belt last year, the International WMO champion 2021. Also got an impressive fight record with 45 fights and 33 wins to his name. So this is set to be a cracker. And you know what the beauty of this? Both guys in their absolute athletic prime. Nero, 28 years old, Amoroso, 27 years old. Big height difference going the way of Amoroso. I'm sure he's used to that kind of difference. And I'm sure that Gomba is used to being the shorter guy in so many of the fights that he's had. And he's had an illustrious career, built largely overseas, built largely in Asia. He's had a lot of fights on him, and especially in Thailand, where it counts as the real world of Muay Thai. Not I, to say that this isn't, but this is a step up in competition for both these guys. Yeah, I guess this also features maybe a little bit like a second coming for Nedo, you know? Like, he had all that, that accolades that he was gathering out there, had a bit of a small break, came back to South Africa. Finally, we, you know, we had the break during COVID, but now we're back on full swing. That's why we named this event that, you know, we have a big crowd here, world title on the line here, international title. We had some South African titles. You know, we're getting back into the swing of things, and it's great to see these guys putting on a show for us. Amoroso's white crew, short, sharp, cheerful, and done. Gomba soaking it all up, taking the plaudits from the crowd. A heavy Iron Tiger army has crept up behind us. As the evening's gone on, they've gotten closer and closer to they're just about scratching my shoulder now. We felt the eyes on us, we turned around, and they were right there, inching up as close as they could to the ring. And that pre-fight silence. Yeah. Feel palpable tension in there. These guys are going to come out hard. You know, Nedo likes to work the elbow game up the inside. So we'll see that now, especially with the Ranger opponent looping in, looking for that. I haven't seen Amoroso. I haven't watched any of his tape. But, I mean, he's the international champion for a reason. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, there was a yeah. problem on the scale yesterday for Amoroso. He came in slightly heavy. He refused to lose the weight for the first couple of minutes, maybe about 40 minutes, but then after, bang the excess weight off after a bit of a discrepancy. Here he is. Let's see how that weight is going to translate coming down the stretch of this fight. Yeah, I think there was a bit of a discrepancy on what they felt the actual ruling was on the, on the weight division. Um, you know, the, the weight divisions actually have point scales in them. So this one's 66.67, not 67 on the nose, which he came in at thinking that he was all right. But he eventually cut the weight, you know, he did what he needed to do, he's a professional. And he's the holder of the title. Yeah, for he sure. He doesn't so want to cough it up for so just missing a couple I mean, of grams. We've seen these things in world titles. Great work from these guys, both busy sizing each other up here. Not a, a very fast start, but, but the, there's power in the strikes. You know, Neto actually landing on his target, finding, he's checking everything, very calm. Like the way he's approaching this fight. And presenting the South Southpaw stance. You can also see his body tatted up with the Sakyans. Yeah, so let's have a look. Tattoo-wise, what's the difference between Avery that we saw before and Gombo? What story is different that you can read here? Well, both of them having the, the Muay Thai power tigers on their backs and the script lines, which are also like defensive scripts. So they're actually quite similar. The two main tattoos that Ned had on his back are the same as Avery. Avery just has a lot more of them and a couple others as well. Back to the action we go. Gomba up against Amoroso, the main event at TFP4, full swing. Big power shots coming from Nedo. He's landing those body shots. Even his punches are, are landing. You know, he's taking one or two little ones, but I don't think they with the same oomph that he's delivering his shots with. A little sneaky elbow there from him. Also, Nedo jumps up, looks for her, the flying elbow to the head. Amoroso puts his leg up and, and defends himself from that. Now, what's strange about that is you do see the un unusual and the extraordinary coming from Gomba, but normally he waits a couple of rounds before he starts dishing that out. Yeah, I think, I think he's maybe look, he's seeing openings, you know, he's maybe trying to give Amoroso something to think about early on. So he maybe puts him, instead of having him coming forward and using his like range, he's going to say, okay, you need to actually be on the back foot. I'm the guy coming forward, jumping in, making you think a bit. But these guys are, are throwing at some big, some big bombs here, powerful strikes. Nero using his own tip to keep Amoroso at bay. Whoa, guys get caught up in each other's ankles there. Now, Amoroso, one of the fights that I got to see was uh, taking place against a guy called Manchai. And he lost that fight by dislocating his elbow from a front kick that was landed on his shin. His shins got taken out from underneath him. He put his arm down to try and break the fall. 
He ended up dislocating his elbow, stood right back up, and Manchai kicked his elbow a few times before he decided it was too much, and the referee called him into that bout. Manchai, a super strong kicker as well. Like, I mean, that's <laughs> if, you, if you're talking about that sort of range, he's, he's definitely fought up against some of the best as well. I think he's got also a sack on his back. I can't see exactly, but it might be Hanuman. Nice work there from Nedo to keep uh, Amoroso at bay. We tried to also jump in there with a looping strike. Big high kicks coming from Amoroso. He's got some playful work. I like the way he brings that left leg up, maybe stabs a little teeth and then switches into a kick. Great round from both guys there. Very tight. Nedo did some good work on the inside. Amoroso playful on the outside. Great opening first round. First round in the can, the action is all here. It's getting thick and faster, and it starts to really just build that crescendo till in the end we're getting a third, fourth, and fifth round that is all out violence. That is Muay Thai. The toughest sport on planet Earth when it comes to stand-up, in my opinion. Trying to assess the body language in the corners here. You know, the guy's not giving too much away. Um, standing, standing. Yeah, both standing, Neto facing away. You know, sometimes you don't want to look at your opponent. Some guys do. Off comes... The ankle guard, one of them. Is that on Nedo? On Nedo, yeah. He just got pulled off by his coach, Shaheen Price. Maybe feeling like they hindering his mobility a bit. You know, he likes to be a bit bouncy. I saw maybe he feels like that's not actually helping him right now. He looks a little bit frustrated in the corner. I'm not just sure why. He had a good round. Funny, Warsaw with his back turned to his opponent as though it's not so that he's showing too much of what's going on. Yeah. Also, just a, a general way for him to just chill out on the edge of the ring there. It's a great level that we've seen from these guys here. World level of Muay Thai in Cape Town, South Africa, as the chant of Nedo rises up behind our shoulder. Crowd back in the local Euro year. Amoroso electing not to use the, the water catch. The World Muay Thai Organization's belt is on the line, the international welterweight version of it. Another four rounds to come. Gomba up against Amoroso. Yeah, I liked what I saw from both fighters there. You know, Amoroso, he's using his range effectively. Neto was finding a few sneaky, getting inside. I think he was catching Amoroso unawares there. Big looping kick from Nedo. Cracks on the side of the body. Amoroso's got a good defense, especially since he's the le lengthier fighter. You'd assume that he wouldn't be so much on the outside. And it seems Amoroso has had the desired effect on Gomba. It's bringing out the best in him, and he's certainly putting on the pressure. He's quick with those little inside snappy kicks, you know, breaking the momentum. Gomba is very sturdy fight. He likes to walk his opponents down. But Amoroso is doing a good job of just disrupting that, that forward momentum, that Terminator style. Inside leg kick landed by Gomba. Hope you're going to see a lot more of those onto the big power leg of Amoroso. You can obviously see what's working well for Nedo is those body strikes, catching Amoroso on the arm there. We've got some big welts, some bruising. <laughs> nice little dance there, dances off. Amoroso's not phased, he, he keeps a poker face, comes forward. He's like, I'll play that game, I'll play that card. Neto catches, nice push off with the knee. Gombo's looking Sweeps like he's Neto's getting feet. comfortable into this fight he's now. He's comfortable, he's got to be careful, he doesn't walk into too much. Especially the Albert as he's on the, on the forward march. Oh, big, big uppercut. uppercut. But Neto eats it like a Terminator. Didn't even register. But he, re he registered in terms of bringing his guard up, putting his elbow across his face and the long guard. That's one way also to help prevent those uppercuts slipping from the inside. Amoroso is doing a great job of disrupting the oncoming attack from Nido Gomba. Yeah, and I think what's also happening with us in commentary is we're getting drawn into the strikes, not really watching what's going on in the overall. But I guess that's the judge's job now. But both fighters, you know, they're, they're both landing, they're both doing good work to, to disrupt their opponent's pressure. Amoroso looks for a sneaky elbow on the top of Neto's head. It's a target right in front of him there. Kick to the groin, gets waved off, carries on. Big butt, big kicks to the big looping punch from Neto. Checks that kick, mouth open a little bit.
Gomba's doing well with the inside leg kicks. He's just coming short when it comes to the attacks with his hands upstairs. And that's the height that is paying into the advantage of Amoroso. Yeah. I think he's really got to make an investment of killing the knee area and getting the inside leg kicks going. And I think Nedo, these guys are also switching between their stances, but I think he needs to look for some of those big looping shots. His, his leg kicks from the back foot when he's in the southpaw position. Because those are landing flush on the arm. There's a big leg kick from him. So he needs to try and focus on those kicks. He's got a lot more power in his kicks. I think Amoroso's kicks are quick. He's rangy and his punches are good, but there's not as much power in those big kicks. He's fighting like the bigger guy. He's not giving any of his heights away. For and sure. he's doing a lot of good work disrupting the attack of Gomba on the inside. Amoroso now taking a few big breaths. Didn't see that after the first round. Still standing, both guys. Standing in the corners, electing not to take the seat. Right, stick your neck out. What are we doing in the first two rounds here, Carl Bergman? Hmm. <laughs> I think in the first round, I'd say that Nero did enough to, to steal that one. The second round maybe going in the favor of Amoroso, keeping him at bay, uh, looking for those long shots, the range, and disrupting Nedo a lot. Like, you know, every time there we have Nedo looking for a sneaky trip, but he gets pushed off. He comes in for a jumping kick and he gets, you know, defended. So I think defensively Amoroso is doing a good job. Some big shots in this round as well. Frustrating Nedo. It'll be interesting to see how, how Nedo comes into this third round. You see, when he, when he looks for those big looping shots, that's when he actually catches him because Amoroso is not necessarily moving off the line. He's using his range to stop, but nedo has got big long kicks that he can find that range with. He needs to maybe do less of the punching or trying to find the chin and maybe just work on more kicks of the leg, kick to the body. My gut feel from watching that last round was more of a story of Nero just coming up short. Yeah. Excuse the pun. There you go. Big body shot. See, it's only when in that case where he's slipped the kick and he has that, he's on the inside, but he needs to hit that body shot every time, that big kick to the body. So and stop, stop looking for the punches, really. Shutting down the space. It's the first time we've seen the guys get into the clinch. Big body shot there. That's another thing he can do is maybe punch to the body. Instead of trying to punch to the head, he can go, you know, target the body here. And that'll pay dividends going further into the round. But, I mean, so far in this round, he's done a good job. We're almost a minute in. Defended well. Good leg kick by Gomba. Yeah, Amoroso's sting on his punches also seems to be dropping off a little bit. Big elbow there. I'm not sure if that landed from the what we saw on the, the screen here. You'd never know from Gomba. He doesn't flinch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big uppercut lands there. Body shot. Another body knee. That uppercut paying dividends for Amoroso. Nedo needs to maybe keep that long guard, keep that left arm up. Work the body more, look for the kicks. Hit that body, look for the kicks. He's got him in the corner here. Maybe a chance to clinch up again, but those body shots are definitely paying off. I'm looking at, at Amoroso's face. He's wincing when that, when that body shot's coming in. And it's gonna be, you know, sapping that energy again. Like we saw in the last fight, those body shots drain you. Even if you're the guy that's well conditioned, the more shots you take to the body, the more fatigue starts to set in. Now we've seen Gomba as a danger with his back to the ropes. He's good at climbing up and landing elbows from the top. We saw it in his last fight at Continental Collision. Beautiful counter shot by Nino Gomba. It's a, a tight round here. Both guys landing some good shots. Nino working well when he goes to the body. Coming up a little bit short, as we said, when he goes for the head, just like that shot, you know, looping miss shot. Like to see him work the body a bit more and just much more of those kicks. Amoroso leaning into his, his uh, boxing now. Gomba is starting to pay dividends. He's drawing the attack out of Amoroso. Amoroso is throwing three or four, sapping his energy, leaving gaps open, and Gomba's coming up with one accurate one. Yeah, that seems to be the measure of play right now in this round. Good work there. Smiling it off. Yeah, Big he kick. Felt it. Both legs landing there. Amoroso, you know, he's also reactive. So every time that, that Nero hits him, he tries to come back a little bit one, two stronger. Big kick. Amoroso has got a bit of damage under his left eye. Keep an eye on it. It's not massive right now, but it could become massive if Gomba keeps zoning in on it. Nero hitting that leg from the outside. Again, goes for the big body shot. Maybe needs to look up with it with a jab and then follow through. 
with that body shot straight right down the pipe. Guys, touch gloves, the end of the third round. Interesting round to score. Very. There's that wealth that we were speaking about, that bruising, maybe a light cut under the eye. His body definitely damaged, touched up. Now he elects to take the seat. That's what I was wondering about. When are we going to see these guys start to show some signs of fatigue? Definitely, you know, he's sitting down, he's breathing heavily. I think that, that body work that we were speaking about starting to pay dividends for Nero. Nero is still standing. He might even be, you know, warming up for the third and fourth round. Actually, this fourth and fifth round now. I think that round took a lot more out of Amoroso than he's willing to show us in the fight itself. But he's showing us on the stool right now. His mouth was hanging open. His gob was coming out of his mouth without any control of it. He looks like he's getting into a war. Yeah, and one of the things that we said that, you know, we're looking at Amoroso and he's quite reactive. So that also takes a lot of energy out of you. You know, he's eating that shot, that's sapping. Then you're now loading up on your shots, right? You're eating one, trying to give a big one back. Sometimes he's missing, sometimes he's landing, sometimes he's swinging right past. That's energy sapping as well. So it's interesting to see what he does now if he maybe, you know, takes an approach of just standing a bit, uh, absorbing, maybe looking a bit more to check instead of, you know, eating a shot, giving a shot. That's quite a, a big thing for him to think about now. Pressure of the two, definitely Nero Gomba. Rounds three, four, and five are on their way. Sorry, Fourth four and five. Underway. We are flying through this fight. See, there's, there's, there's a lot of, I would say a lot of action from Amoroso, but they're not, the, the shots are kind of glancing, not as strong. He's also trying to like maybe wake his legs up a bit by bouncing a bit. Is he able to sustain this output? That's the thing. Yeah, that's the other thing is that that's also tiring. Maybe, you know, he's not throwing as hard, but he's throwing in volume and he's bouncing a lot in speed. Neto coming back to work the body now. As we said earlier, that Terminator approach, walking forward, taking a shot here and there, but definitely landing the more aggressive, powerful strikes. Slipping there and gives a big hook to the body. Amoroso wins the bit. How's that ribcage? So, I mean, the fact that, that he's got that long, exposed body, Nero's right there for those big punches. He's looking oh. for that, he's landing those kicks, he's being aggressive, he's even putting him up against the, the ropes now. He's fighting like the bigger guy. Yeah. And we're also doing his best not to back down, but you can see that, you know, the reaction as well, the way he moved his head away there, expecting something, but nothing came. Mouth is open. Possibly a chance for Nedo to get a big looping overhand here. Nedo also breathing a little bit heavy, but definitely looking a lot more composed. Decided this. Yeah, great catch and release. What's often been happening is he's been catching the kicks on Marosa. Marosa puts his knee in and pushes him off. That was a good idea from Nedo there to catch it, release it, and return with the kick. You see, carry on working that body, even though we're in the fourth round, you know, slow your opponent down. There was an acknowledgement it's, it's of the points. overhand right from Nero Gomba, thrown by Amoroso with a bad intention. Crowd's gone surprisingly quiet here. This round is on a knife edge right now. Nedo's just got to stay focused, work that body the way he was doing in the beginning of the round. Amoroso, not really much in his strikes. You know, he's done well to, to land a few big punches in the round, though. So he's also making sure that Nedo doesn't just walk in without any disregard and has to be careful not to eat two big shots. Nedo keeping him at bay now with those teeps. 30 seconds left in the round. Gomba's definitely feeling it. There's no doubt that his mouth is hanging a little wider open than it has the entire fight so far. And it would be. Both these guys working. The work rate has been high. You know, they've both been eating shots too. Nero getting a bit playful now. 20 seconds left in this round. And we'll also taps his glove. This could quite conceivably be an Amoroso round. I still think Nero did enough to touch him up in the early rounds. And I don't think that, that, Amoroso, that Amoroso strikes have been that lethal, you know? So it's, it's, it's about volume of strikes, but it's also about effective striking. So Nero might not be landing as many shots as Amoroso, but he's definitely landing with, with ill intent. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching us live on YouTube. Of course, it's Tireholics Fight Promotion. Click, like, and subscribe. Share it with all your friends. Share it around on Facebook as well. Follow us on Facebook, Tireholics Fight Promotions, and on Instagram, Tireholics underscore fight underscore promotions. Of course, TFP number five level up event coming your way 23rd of July 2022 here at the Grand West Casino and Entertainment World in Cape Town, South Africa. It's going to be a mixed card, pros, pro-ams and amateurs. The main event yet to be announced in the coming weeks. Look out for that information coming through. Anthony Mailer makes his return. Shane Deacon making a defense. Ishak Ibrahim, of course, making a defense of his title. And of course, you can get the merch. Please info, uh, email your information to admin at tireholics.com. Right, so take a quick look at these replays here in the fourth penultimate round. Neto doing well with that big body shot. I think he recognized that, you know, when he catches, he can, he can do some damage there. It's difficult to go head hunting when your opponents are tall. So that's what I liked in that round. Effective striking to the body, some good kicks, keeping Amoroso at bay. Amoroso landing some good shots of his own. And in reply, definitely a very reactive fighter. The whistle gets blown for seconds out. The crowd trying to pick their fight up. L last round, some work to be done. It's a very close fight. The pants go up a level. <laughs> level up. That's TFP5. <laughs> All right, guys, hug it out. Last Final round, round of the night, man. We are so pumped for this. We're also trying to bring some, some of that energy to his legs. You see him bouncing again the way he did in the beginning of the fourth. But I mean, those strikes, not very hard, but disruptive. Neto coming right with hand. the power. But I think he's going to 19 now. He maybe also feels like he's a bit behind on the card. On the judges' scorecards, I mean. Both. Also does have a nice style, a flowing style with his punching as well. Like, he lands the one and then brings that uppercut in. What is that? Tip to the groin. Both guys are starting to fight like they're down on the scorecards. Good tip there from Amoroso. Neto's going to have to get that back. He needs to avenge that specific move. Thinking he's start working off his power side. Just like that. He needs to throw those kicks, work the body, big punches. That big hook that he used in, in the, the last round worked really well. Amoroso's doing, doing a good job of just picking him off on the outside. Disrupting it. Yeah, and completely just staying at work. Maybe not big shots, but that's definitely stopping Neto's momentum. And, you know, in this fifth round, those are still shots that you're going to feel. A big, big right, big right straight. From Nedo, he catches, drops it. Working forward, Amoroso staying active, making sure that he keeps Nedo at bay. But as you can see, those strikes, they're landing on Nedo, but they're not doing anything to him necessarily in damage wise. It's just He's looking for the big shots. Minute and a half left in this fight. Amoroso, some lazy kicks. But still effective on that side. Neto catches. Big looping shot. Not jumps in, landing, jumps in with his shin and knee. I think in, in this last minute, it's the time for Neto to switch it up and actually start working, throwing volley shots. You know, he's been, he's been using a lot of one power shot here, power kick there. But if he starts opening up a bit of combinations, if he's still got something in the tank, he's going to find something landing. I mean, his hands are low. His defense not too great at the moment. Final minute, final 45 seconds. I'm so mesmerized just watching this. I forgot I'm commentating for a second. <laughs> I'm at home watching this on my TV. Nero doing well, still landing some power shots here. Final 30 seconds of the round. The international WMO welterweight belt on the line. Both guys giving their all in this five rounds. What a round it's been. The coaches, the crowd pushing them on, egging them on. 15 seconds to go. 10 seconds, here we go. Lost, Hail Mary. Neto gives a big loop and strike to the back of the head. Comes in, grabs in the clinch, and that is all she wrote. Amoroso kisses Nedo on the cheek, walks away, pumps his fist in there. Nedo jumps on the ropes. Tough one to call. Both these guys think they might have it in the bag. I think Amoroso thinks he's held onto his belt. I'm wondering if we can see a bit of 
Nado's reaction here. Great fight from these guys. Doing the necessary. Nedo looking for the big power shots. Amoroso staying on the outside, making sure that his short opponent doesn't get in and you know do any major damage. Did well even in the late rounds just to keep picking at Nedo. Nedo did well to hit some of those big body shots. I guess we'll see what the referees are counting now. Strikes landed, effectiveness of strikes, uh, domination, moving the guys around the ring. Both guys walking around as the judges are making the decision. There's some deliberation here. Not sure what's happening, but they strutting around the ring with their hands in the air. All right, looks like we maybe have a decision here. Devon Curra stepping into the ring. Referee jean de Blaine calls the guys to the middle for the announcement. And crew Nicholas Radley bringing in the international belt. WMO, World Muay Thai Organization, international welterweight belt. 66.67 kgs. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give both of these fighters a massive round of applause. <laughs> Awarding the belt to the winner will be Nicholas Bradley, the co-president of the South African Muay Thai organization, as well as the organizer here at Thai Holix Fight Promotions. A big round of applause for Nicholas Bradley, please. And we go to the judges' scorecards. After five rounds of absolute war, ladies and gentlemen, your winner coming by way of unanimous decision victory. And still, the WMO International Welterweight Champion retaining his title by unanimous decision victory. Italian Pasquale Amoroso. Pasquale Amoroso does enough to get the judges' decision. Five rounds of war with Nedo Gomba. The pulp falls off his waist. He's so excited. No man to pick it up with. His coach does the drop for him. Beats crew Nicholas Radley in the center. The pulp stays around his waist. Great job he did there to keep Ned on the outside, pick him off, and just do the job he needed to do and get his belt back on that plane going home. As we play out with Pasquale Amoroso, the victor in this main event at TFP number four, we look forward to TFP five coming your way, 23rd of July. Carl Bergman, it's been an absolute pleasure announcing these fights with you. Thank you so much. Cheers, my my name Devin. is Kevin Curra. It's been an absolute pleasure announcing and commentating my way through this magical tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see you soon. TFP 5, level up, 23rd of July, 2022.